All right, hey everybody, and welcome to a 90 minute workout or a 90 minute art challenge. My name is Bobby Chu, and uh, my co host, Masay Seki, is also on here. Today, we're going to be doing a shop talk. Hey, Masay, so today we're going to be doing a shop talk. And uh, last, last week, we did your shop talk, which is amazing. Um, this is what we're going to be doing today. Here, let me put on screen. I'm going to be talking about this painting, breaking it down. Also, I have the process video so we could go through that as well. Okay. The other thing I want to mention here is the challenge. What is today's challenge? Well, it's a challenge. It's a lesson. It's a very powerful and very um, exciting lesson for any artist out there because we're going to break some rules today. The idea is how do you use blue to create a realistic feeling skin tone? How do you use blue to make a realistic you know, skin tone? Um, I'm going to be breaking that down to, for you, but that is your challenge today. And uh, like any other Natty Mac challenge, we encourage you to share. So. For any 90 minute art challenge, sometimes we are copying an image like this, and sometimes we have more imaginative um, challenges like this, like paint skin with the color blue. How are you gonna do that? It's a puzzle. You're gonna figure it out, and I'll help to figure it out for you as we go through today's um, talk. And then the other thing is, once you're done, you can upload it to 90 Min Art Challenge, hashtag 90 Min Art Challenge on Instagram. And we'll be, you know, we love going through all these various uh, submissions that keep coming in. Everybody's practicing. It's awesome. And you can see everybody's practicing in different ways, too which is very, very cool, right? It's so awesome seeing all the different styles. This is from today's, <laughs> very cool. All right, so my goodness, I picked out a lot today because there was actually a ton of entries, just a ton. keeps going and then this is from yours frozen treat yeah oh okay um hmm Okay, I'll try to figure out what other, let me close this thing too. Oops, okay. Hopefully that'll help a bit. I'm not sure what else I could close here. Um, but okay, so yeah, <laughs> this one was awesome. This is a great one to freeze on. This one was fun too. Let's see here. I'm gonna have to move my little camera for a sec. And then look at this one, this one's so nice. All right. Um, now let's get into the challenge here. So everybody can do their own painting skin with the color blue. And uh, let me help break some stuff down to you. Okay, we have our hue, we have our color thing right here. If I, I drop this tone, what do I get? I'm still in blue. I, I drop this tone, I'm still in blue, I'm still in blue. Okay, so and then obviously, if you, if you go here, I'm getting into pretty cool red and then almost like magenta. 
Okay, but the majority is blue. Now, why does this work? This part is going to be so much fun to kind of uh, explain because this is stuff that I only learned after being a professional for Oh, okay, uh, let me see here. Oh, okay, hold on. I'm s okay, there we go. I'm sorry about that. There's hey, so many things. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I okay. mean, Mondays. Mondays. There we go. Thank you, Musse. Always the best co-host ever. <laughs> okay, so what is this color? This color is blue, right? This is leaning a little bit more towards cyan now. But if you look at my hue slider here, right? I don't know how big I could get this, but let's try to get this kind of big. All right, this is going to be great. Okay, so you can see on my hue slider here, I went all the way up to the top, right? All the way mm -hmm. up to the top. So my value on this tone is pretty much as light as it can go at this saturation. So that makes perfect sense, right? And usually how it goes, usually how it goes is, um, this is how I was kind of taught. I was taught this rule Okay, I was taught this rule which said, hey, if you're going to if you're going to paint something of this color, right, this object, and you want to go uh, darker, you're going to go towards the bottom right, not towards the bottom left, but towards the bottom right. So as we get darker, we get more and more saturated, more and more saturated, right? So that looks nice, right? Mm -hmm. And then the final one is this tone right here. Now, say we went the other direction. Say we went here and we start to go down and we start to go down and we start to go down. Now, does that look realistic? That doesn't really, it looks kind of weird, right? If this was <laughs> shading an object. So that's why the general rule if you've heard this, I'm going to break this in a second here. The general rule is to start from whatever point. And if you want to go downwards, you're going generally towards the bottom right and generally towards the top left if you want to go lighter. Right? If you went the other direction, it might feel a little odd. Like, how is that one object, right? It doesn't, it feels like the object's color starts to change. Okay, well, mm -hmm. the, the answer to how do you paint with, um, with this color blue for skin, it kind of lies in this. It kind of lies in this, actually. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Mm -hmm. um, if we take a look at, oh, that's the reference, by the way. We can get into that later. But um, say we take a look at this and we go, okay, well, this is the ambient light all around in, in this world. Okay. This is of a very bright value. Now, if I want to warm up this um, image, if I want to put in an image here that reads as flesh tone, we need a warmer color. Mm -hmm. Well, this is an extremely cool color right now, mm -hmm. right? So perhaps when I do the warmer color, I'm going to shift more towards a less saturated tone. And we, you know, many of us know this. Okay. So you would shift to a much less saturated tone. And when you do that, it starts to feel more warm. Right? And if I start to do that even more as I go darker, right, this darker tone starts to feel warmer. Mm -hmm. 
and it acts like I'm shifting towards uh, the bottom right, right? Because um, okay, because the background tone, this is kind of like the neutral ambient light all around. Well, if this color is a warm, co if it's supposed to read as warm, then I just need to desaturate and it will feel warmer comparatively to this extremely cool color. Now, if I mm -hmm. want it to feel even warmer, so in other words, even more saturated kind of, you know what I mean? Even warmer, then I'd right. want to take away even more saturation. And when I take away even more saturation, it will feel even warmer. It'll give the sensation of being more saturated. Mm -hmm. But just not like cool function. saturated. It's going into a warm right. saturation. And then mm -hmm. here's the little cheat. You top it all <coughs> off with a little bit of actual, you know, saturation. You don't need too much. Right? You do the eyes, nose, mouth area. Or yeah, I did the lips. Right? And then all of a sudden, it feels like this. So that's the key that everybody can kind of work with as they try to create their mm -hmm. own cool skin or their, their own realistic skin tone with the color blue. Because most of this is blue. It's just some of it, mm -hmm. a tiny fraction of it is actually um, a warm hue. So as I get darker, right? Um, we get less saturated generally. Or you could go straight down if you want. Uh, but yeah, any questions so far before we get into the video? Yeah, if anyone has questions from Discord, feel free to ask anytime. But um, that's, that's a really cool um, thing that I just learned because I, I feel like I, in my mind, I knew that like, when it's in a cool like setting and then if you want something warmer you're supposed to make it look warmer but i never knew like it kind of almost follows like this rule that it follows so it's not something people should like you know stick to all the time but it's like generally it's like a general thing to understand how to use like the the color selection yeah i feel like some things it's like um we as artists, we almost want to find what is, what's the thing that you can do to break that rule and still do mm -hmm. something awesome. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. uh, also, this might be very complex for some of the more beginner artists out there. If you are a beginner artist, if you, if this is a little bit too advanced for you, um, I just want to mentioned schoolism.com. This is where I teach. You know, and currently there's a winter sale. <clears throat> you get $100 off an entire year of education, usually a year of education, a year of the subscription that gives you access to over like all the courses, over 40 courses is uh, $300. Right now, it's about $200. So it's an amazing, amazing sale. Definitely get in there. Um, and once you do, once you Go to schoolism.com, you could just click on the banner, sign up. Once you register, uh, then you have access to all the courses, which is really a ton. Uh, this one's starting soon as well, starting your journey with Cody Gramstad. And there's just a bunch here. I'm working on another one as well. This one's mine currently. And then we also have a bunch of uh, artist workouts that are super cool. And Helen's is coming. And uh, Sergio Pablo, yes. Arts, not Sergio Pablo, why did I say that? I saw Pablo, uh, Pablo Carpio, excuse me, Pablo. Anyways. Oh, uh, that's so exciting. I'm looking so forward to that. Oh man, I've been seeing um, sneak peeks from both of those. Very exciting, I'm definitely mm. gonna be doing those. Uh, so here we go, we're gonna get, get into the video now because you're gonna wanna see how I painted this in real time as well, right? So I have the video for everybody too. 
And at this point, I'd love to open this up for discussion with uh, the Discord community. You could go to bit.ly slash LBX Discord to join us live pretty much all the time. <laughs> There's always somebody in here. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, Discord community, if you have any questions, uh, I'd be happy to help. And this one is especially special because, especially special, because um, I can actually <laughs> paint things, right? And show you by painting them as well. <laughs> All right. Well, while everybody gathers their thoughts, I'm going to shoot over to the high res uh, painting, okay? And break it down. So this is how I started off. Are we still okay? Okay, cool. This is how I started off. Oh, yeah. uh, the main thing here is I didn't want to make just a solid color, right? I wanted to mix it up a little bit with some variations as if there's something going on in the back. A solid color, it just, you can feel the, cl the cleanness of it so mm -hmm. much, right? Yeah. So after that, I started to do this. Now, how did that come about? Well, <laughs> you know, because it's kind of like one of those instructions, draw a circle, draw a cross, and then finish the owl or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, Masay and I, we both sketch quite a bit on just like one layer, or you constantly merge layers down as you're going. So I want to show this initial part here. First, I want to kind of, kind of just point out this whole entire time, I'm painting in this little thumbnail. I'm not painting in the larger image, right? Because I'm painting in the small Bobby, thumbnail. For... Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, there's a delay in Discord, right? Hey, Bobby. Yeah? Sorry, you're chopping in and out again. Oh, okay. Um... How about we get off of Zoom, Masse? Or if there's any dreams that you're watching, maybe that might affect um, the connection. Um, oh. Or sorry, just get off of Zoom video. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not doing any Zoom uh, streaming or whatever. So mm -hmm. maybe I'll just. I'll sh let's get off of Zoom, because Zoom tends to lag things down so much. Okay. 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 Cool. I'll just watch a YouTube video. Got it. Yeah. And I'll try sharing on Zoom or on Discord so that you guys can, everybody in Discord can see a little bit more real time. Um, Good. Hopefully this works. You seem oh, sure there. I think I'm streaming the wrong thing. Excuse me, sorry. I think I, uh, I, I see, see uh, a face. Yep. Yeah, I, I but I think I was streaming the wrong thing. I, I want to stream my screen, sorry. I was just streaming a, a video instead of the whole entire screen. Okay. All right, there we go. So you can see that uh, in this very beginning, this is my character, right? It's nothing like the final. Um, but that's okay because I, you know, I have a time limit. I gave myself two hours to finish this. Uh, and I need to get things down. So the idea was get down as many notes as possible. So the first note is I was looking at um, Harrison Ford and I was looking at Kylo Ren actor, I forget his name right now. I usually remember, but um, you know, Harrison Ford compared to, shoot, what's his name? Kylo Ren anyways. Uh, <laughs> Harrison has a more rounder head, right? Like- It's Adam Driver. There you go. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Okay, so Adam Driver's head, Kylo Ren's head is very elongated. It's very stretched, right? Everybody can feel that. Um, so that was the big note that I had in my video.
before I went into more of a final, right? I just drew this down super quick going, okay, stretched head, rounder head. This part, I didn't even finish the rest of Harrison Ford's head, but if you look at the space, it creates a round shape. And then I started to paint in. Now here's, a, here's an important part, right? Look at my color picker. This whole entire time, I've got nothing but, as I'm painting this down, I have nothing but blue, mm. right? And it looks so warm. Mm -hmm. It looks especially warm because I have this very blue, you know, dark tone here as well. So comparatively, now these tones for the flesh, I have two things to compare to the background plus the hair. Both of these have huge amounts of blue saturation in them. So I bring this over, all of a sudden this is a very warm tone. And then I only need to go to like uh, magenta to have something that feels pretty much pink. Mm -hmm. right? And that's, that could be a very powerful thing when people experience this for themselves and start to actually paint it down. Yeah, that's awesome because I, I feel like it's pretty, um, when people do want like a blue environment with a blue, like a subject that's influenced by the blue surroundings, um, it's easy to, you know, go into Photoshop, get it, grab an adjustment layer and throw a blue shade on top to get more of a blue feeling. But to actually experience how to, you know, pick all these colors out yourself, I feel like that is very valuable because then you get a better understanding of like, how one color is supposed to look relative to each other. Absolutely. You did um, like a huge series of like these hue exercises, right? In November. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's uh, you take one color and then you adjust it so that it looks like a certain color. I mean, I did cheat a bit by take like using regular colors and just making the background um, that specific color, but I think just being able to experiment, ex yeah, experiment how um, to pick specific colors is, it helped me a lot later on with all my other like color choices. Now look at Harrison Ford's cheek here. Doesn't that look so freaking like warm to you? Yeah. Right, but say, okay, now this gets into a warm tone here, but if I bring up Photoshop again, and we go to this tone here, that is such a blue tone, right? It's such a blue tone. But it's because you have all these other tones that are more saturated, and they're still mm -hmm. very cool, and some get very mm -hmm. saturated, then all of a sudden, something that's this little saturation starts to feel extremely warm comparatively. Mm -hmm. It says a lot about like um, relativity, like how color will look very different. Like if you had, um, like if the hair was a bit more, uh, you know, desaturated, then the skin tone won't look as warm as it would right now. Yeah, exactly. Really it cool. would it would mess up the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of neat when it's like. Oh, if you want something that feels um, more saturated warm, you're actually going desaturated blue. And if you mm -hmm. want something extremely cold, which usually we would go less saturated with a warm tone, you're actually going to go more saturated with the blue tone. And I think um, because you, were, you established the background with a cool color, it was a lot easier to find your your flesh tone colors because um when I, I i feel like well for me myself when i try to paint um someone in a cool environment and i try to tackle this the subject first and then i put the environment in the back the the person just starts to look like they're out of place so i feel like that's also an important step in this whole um process Sorry, you, you're saying, so you're saying to put the, putting in the surrounding colors really helps. It, mm -hmm. Just, yeah. yeah, like, um, because 
you know, you're trying to compare colors with colors. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always that, that question that uh, tends to pop up for a lot of people. And hey, Discord people, if you want to join in on this conversation, go right ahead. But like, what I'm saying is, a lot of times the one of the most common questions is what color do you start off with? Right? What, what do you start mm -hmm. off with? How do you start? Mm -hmm. Generally, um, I kind of think about it like, okay, well, there is no right answer. But I'm trying to save myself time. So what is the color there? That is the most kind of everywhere? That's the color I would start mm -hmm. off with. Blue. <laughs> in this case, it's pretty easy, right? It's blue. Yeah. yeah. But in some cases, I, I've seen some uh, 90 Mac challenges that we do where like each one of us starts off with a different color and then we all end up at the same result. Yeah. Right. Which kind of means That's like, interesting. yeah, there is no right answer necessarily. Mm -hmm. I'm trying it out right now, and it's so freaky indeed. Uh, like applying what you said, like I'm picking a color and it doesn't look like skin color, and it looks like skin. It's so weird. <laughs> it's just funny. Awesome. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. Like anybody that tries this that doesn't know will love it. They'll. I'm hoping to kind of like bring some new lovers of painting into into the world with this stream a little bit, you know, because like, it's so neat to see uh, the effects. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah. Now, the other thing about this painting that I really liked um, was something that I've been doing quite a lot, which is a, a almost non-existent sketch right there's no tight drawing happening and going straight to color now going straight to color was something that i found a bit difficult and of course if you find any of this stuff difficult uh, i highly suggest my digital painting class it goes through the basics all the way up um, so it'll be a little easier for you but uh what color do I start off with when I'm going straight to color? So that's something that I feel like I need to explain visually. I'm going to go to this. Okay, so say my tone here. Actually, I might actually just start here. Oops. Go. Okay. So say I'm sketching a head and I try to sketch a head. Okay, and uh, there's that it's high high contrast so it doesn't look so hot right let me reduce my contrast a whole bunch and i'm going to sketch the same head right this starts to look a little better and it helps me to kind of see uh, where this sketch is going, like where something might be a little bit too long, a little bit too short, whatever. It helps me to see a bit more of the eye, even though I just did literally like this for the eye area, right? It helps me to kind of see, okay, yeah, within that eye, if I start to put a more contrasting tone in here, all of a sudden I could see Oh yeah, I could kind of see that eye a bit more. I could start to use the rough sketch that I did to um, understand where that eye should be. And I'm bringing out the eye with more contrast, right? Same with the nose. I'm bringing it out with more contrast. And now you forgive all those rougher marks so much more, right? So I'm going mm -hmm. from if 
if uh, this is zero contrast all the way to this, which is like black and white, like extreme contrast, right? When, when I'm picking my initial tones, if the head goes from this value all the way to this value, I'm generally picking a value around here. And then afterwards, I'll pick a value around, maybe around here, very close together, and then one slightly darker or lighter, or whatever, it doesn't matter, but still quite close together. Then I'll make a jump. Mm -hmm. And I'll get very contrasting. It's it's mm -hmm. exponential. It's not um, intermittent, like a uh, you know equal spacing, right? So mm -hmm. I have all these tones. They're all kind of more mid tone range, and then the darker tone is not the darkest tone I'm going to go to, but it's going to get close to that dark tone. So all of these they're pretty much my first guess at the thing. And then from here, I can look at my first guess and apply more contrast for my second guess. When mm -hmm. I apply more contrast for my second guess, right, then you stop kind of concentrating on those subtle tones because these more contrasting tones really take over. Mm -hmm. Does they're, that make sense? They're kind right? of like um, they're kind of like little landmarks and notes for yourself as well. When you do small, like very low contrast, when you make those marks, yeah, trying to indicate the shadow parts or like where certain forms are supposed to go. That's really cool to see. You know, one other um, one other big kind of I don't know light bulb moment. Uh, before, when I, when I thought about doing it like this, it's like you see all these traditional painters especially, they lay down all this loose paint. Nothing is exact. Well, then how am I going to create any kind of landmarks when nothing is exact? You know what I mean? Mm. It's like if I paint mm -hmm. all this loose stuff, well, where is the nostril really? You know, where were those lips if if we're going down to like this level, right? Or perhaps even more like this level, like this level, my goodness, where do you start yeah. from here? It's all kind of like, it's kind of there somewhere, right? So that was something mm -hmm. else that was kind of difficult for me. Um, I remember in the very, very beginning and the idea is, yeah, lay it down the best you can. This isn't very contrasting. You can make all sorts of contrasting marks to really, really start to define things and overpower mm -hmm. all of these marks that you're putting down. So mm -hmm. just put them down the best you can, then find a point and solidify that point. So for me, that point was the hair. The top of the hair first helps me to understand, you know, like doing this side of the hair helps me to understand the other side of the hair. Can you imagine right? The shape that you want for that other side of the hair. And then I go into that. And that helps me to imagine a bit more of the face, right? I knew my eye sockets were in the wrong area. So I start to move them up because I want to really elongate his face, making it a character. Right? Mm -hmm. And those tones are so close together too, because low contrast, what if I get it wrong? I just put in low contrast right now. Right, and then start bringing in more and more contrast. And even right here, this this is starting to get quite defined, mm -hmm. even though it's very low contrast still. And then that helps me to get this stuff, this stuff down. That's awesome. So, I don't know. Any um, anybody want to join in and? chat about any of this yeah if anyone has questions or wants to say anything well i'm having time understanding the shapes of the faces 
having a it's okay colors are complicated all right but then when i try to see their faces and kind of get the shape of it so i can put down the colors more precisely i'm having a real hard time this is exactly how did you figure this out awesome awesome question um and so this is exactly why the shop talks will be different than the 90 minute workouts because I could really go, we could all really go in depth into um, explanations of things, right? Somebody else was asking, did I have reference? This was in the chat in YouTube. This was the reference I had, and then this is what I did. So you can see that the, the colors change and such. Um, it's not eye dropping, oops. Right, it's not eye dropping, it's recreating. Okay, here's some simple things for the head that you can try out. Usually when I paint a head or I paint anything, I'm trying to create something that is going from the most important down to the least important. Now, um, most important thing about a head, I feel, is the cranium. Why? Because there's two main parts that connect to the cranium one is the you know neck and then one is the jaw right and i'm going to erase this ugly line here because we don't really use that line too much okay so the person's looking this way we have the jaw we have the cranium and we have the neck sometimes there's variations okay so sometimes you have uh, a cranium that feels a bit longer right and usually usually if the person turns towards us usually that head is also kind of like thinner as well it's like it got squished a little bit like this compared to a round head um, then there's other variations where a cranium might actually feel a bit more like a peanut you ever see those really big people with the folds in their heads that look so cool? You know, things like that. Yeah. It almost feels like their, their cranium is kind of like a peanut shape, right? And I'll, I'll finish <laughs> all of these as well. Okay, so I'll give this person, this peanut shape guy, a different jaw, a big jaw, because we're just saying those are for big people generally. And then the neck, I'm not going to give it a straight line. What other variations of the neck can we get? give? We could give a nice little fold here and then another fold right just because we were talking about that and then for this one here we're saying that you know looking front on this person's going to be skinny i'm going to think about that as i do the profile right so um i'm going to think maybe a bit of a longer kind of chin and this one is stylized and why am I stylizing this? It's because I want to show that really this technique that I'm showing you does not dictate your style. You will not be drawing like me. Y you know, you will still be drawing like you. It, this, this method that I've taught for years, like decades, really just helps to enhance your own vision, your own creativity. Okay, so now um, the eyes. Well, I was, I did this, right? A simple arrow earlier to create like an eye shape. Now, what other kind of arrows can we make? Well, we could maybe make an arrow like this where it goes convex instead of concave, right? Like kind of like Homer Simpson's eyes kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then what about this guy? This guy's all about the folds. So I'm going to go with that and make a fold for the eye. So the arrow is like this as opposed to like this. Right? And then another arrow for the mouth. Okay, I did that one very simply earlier. Now you can kind of feel mouth area. I'm not going to draw the lips because that gets very complicated, especially when you're trying to do it quickly. And it's like, ah, it looks like crap but you could do an arrow pretty quickly, right? This guy here, let's start off with this guy with all these round shapes. Perhaps this person's mouth 
is a round arrow, okay, as, a point, as opposed to just this basic arrow. And then this last guy here, well, you know what? The other one was convex instead of concave. Let's do concave instead of convex. And we're, now we're doing an arrow going inwards. Can you kind of feel that this guy needs some dentures or something, right? It's an old person, perhaps. And now the nose. So the nose, we know that there's many different versions of the nose. Many, many versions. Arrow. Look at that. Arrow for the eyes, nose, mouth area. They're all arrows. This guy, he's a bit of a rounder kind of person. So I'm going to give him a rounder nose just for design's sake. And then this last guy seems like he's been around for a while. He's got a very big nose. He's just kept growing. Right? <laughs> and then we have the chin and so on and so forth. We can think about what kind of chin this person has. Perhaps they have very little chin, right? It goes like that. But these, this exercise here gets really fun, doesn't it? You're just playing with arrows. And that helps to determine so much about a person's face so quickly. Right, here's another one. And by the way, uh, half the time, it does feel like I'm just talking to Masay. So if you do like this, everybody, especially in, in uh, YouTube, I could see all the little uh, emojis and such when people put them up there. Uh, you know, how about some uh, heart emojis if you're liking what you're hearing today? Okay. And then I'm going to add yeah, in I love here. This method. Oh, thanks. It's yeah, it's really cool. I, I use this a lot too. It's just like um, simplifying shapes and then just finding out different combinations and what you can achieve with that. It's it's really awesome because it's so quick and it's like pretty effortless. And then you just you just discover like cool ways to like combine things to get specific type of personalities and like um, characters. Awesome. It's really, yeah, it's really awesome. May I just say, this is blowing my mind. Um, oh, this, really? this just answered a question that I've been having for quite a while because I've been trying to stylize faces and I always tend to like take like a realistic facial feature and then like push the shapes in there but like this starting from like an arrow and like i've been told simplify before but actually seeing it there mind blown mm -hmm. mind blown thank you guys oh, you guys thanks <laughs> so you, you're someone here is receiving it and he's like yes <laughs> that's awesome well you know this um, method I is really like this is a method, the, the whole arrow technique is a method that I created myself. I did not learn this from anybody else except for like just sketching on the subway, sketching so much uh, for years and so many different faces. And you don't want to stare at people on the subway, especially they'll yell at you. Um, <laughs> you got to be able to know how to put down a face very quickly, right? Mm -hmm. And then the mouth I could break that up yeah yeah that's, that's why I would draw the feet in the subway because when you're looking <laughs> down nobody knows you're drawing their feet yeah <laughs> all right yeah this is so fun right and then you could do the same thing with all of these other ones you could just kind of use those arrows to see <laughs> what is that design in there what is that character that I really want to see in there and start to solidify things? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's cool. It's like you're going from um, macro to micro. You're just laying down the big initial shapes, getting that like that feel down. And it was like the same with your painting. It's like you got the totally. basic, basic big shapes, and then you're going into the small detail because you're trying to make everything work together if you work from like a like the eye for example then it might not tie together well with like the hair or like the hand so i think that's a pretty important lesson as well like whether it's drawing or painting it's getting that overall initial um feel in the beginning yeah, the main thing well, that i oh go ahead yeah sorry um, um like how do you, you go for... <laughs> 
<laughs> no, you go. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, Bobby, how do you avoid muddiness while painting, um, especially with this kind, this kind of colors? Yeah. Um, so let's see here. I feel like a lot of muddiness comes from that whole that whole idea of um, going the wrong direction when you're shading, you know, when you're creating values. If you go in the wrong direction, it will create muddiness instantly. Um, so, in other words, like say I took a an object here. Okay, and then I'm gonna go, I'm gonna start to go down this direction. Sometimes it's hard to do, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you ever experienced this, Masse, but sometimes now it's like, it's kind of hard to do the wrong thing because like you train yourself so much to correct all the time. Um, <laughs> but yeah, mm -hmm. and this might not even look too bad right now, but I think if we bring it into another environment, then it'll look much worse. So I'm trying to make this look real shitty. Let's take this out. <laughs> Let's put it right here. Okay, and then I'm going to take this mid-tone. And let's experiment and do a different version where we have the colors mm -hmm. going in the other direction. So if I go mm -hmm. like this, I start to tone, tone, tone. Right? Now, this one could look good, I think, like if you just, I don't know, but this one looks funky. Well, like why does it get more saturated as it gets lighter? Doesn't that, I don't know if that makes sense to everybody. Maybe if I change the hue, because, I don't know, sometimes, oh. Here we go. I don't know if everybody can get that. If I made that more extreme, maybe you could kind of see it more, but this feels much more natural to me. This one feels mm -hmm. strange. Like there's a strange light kind of just hidden right there for some reason in this very local area, which is why that area is getting more saturated. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I sorry. Uh, just the question I had back to the arrow um thing. Uh, the arrow exercise. When you're say you're doing that, you're either doodling or you're drawing people on the subway. Do you, while you're doing this process, add um story to the character like okay like you well this guy's an old guy doesn't have dentures or like this guy but like do you start adding personality in your head or is that something that you would add after you've seen the character and then you're like oh this like like where's the relationship i guess between this like stylization and then like trying to capture a thinking character in this, practice I guess. yeah uh the stylization is really just a tool um hmm. the focus is usually something like that like what is this character what is the whatever uh you know i say arrow method because that's a very easy way to understand what the heck i'm talking about and you start to relate oh this arrow could also be like this it could also be like this it could also be like this it could be so many different things 
right? But um, somebody else was saying, well, how do you do a three-quarter view? Well, I have the cranium, right? I have the neck, I have the jaw that goes into the neck or into the cranium, and then I have hybrid arrows, right? And then the nose might not be totally uh, an arrow anymore. It might just be the bottom part of the arrow without the top. The mouth, instead of going like this, I might go like this until the point where I actually need to start going like this, right? And as I start to turn even more, get rid of this as I start to turn even more and I start to face the viewer right I have the cranium but I'm not going to draw this down because there's the jaw in the way uh, and I might throw in the jaw <clears throat> or I, I would definitely throw in the jaw I, I meant the neck right there's where the neck might be now before I had arrows to indicate the um, eye area. Now I don't, right? Because how's that going to work? That's not going to work. <laughs> so instead, I think about it as like sunglasses, but only the top frames of the sunglasses, right? So instead, I'm going to look at this person's head and I'm going to go, what kind of sunglasses best suit that person's head, right? And, but instead, I am thinking about this. It's just I'm only putting these top parts in there. Okay, the next part to this is I'm thinking about the chin and the shadow that happens just underneath that lip, right? So I'm thinking about the chin, I think about the lip, I do that shadow. Um, I think about the nose. Generally, noses are going to have a bit of a shadow as well. You know, 90% of those um, poses, it's, it's the shadows underneath. If it's an upshot with the shadow, then it'd be something more like this, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about generally, right? And if I just do that, okay, if you don't see a face yet, right? Can you start to kind of, sort of picture the eyes? You know, you might need some more marks in there. You might want to throw down the bottom part of the eye area, you know, the eye bags, if they have heavy eye bags. You might consider the top part of the eye. And notice I go from top part of the eye to the top part of the eye, right? I don't try to finish an eye and then go for the other eye. Uh, you can, lots of people do, but I'm a very methodical painter. I try to look for the easiest way to do everything. And the easiest way for me is to build it together. Um, Cause I feel like I have memories of doing <clears throat> an amazing eye and only one. <laughs> when I tried to do the other one, my whole painting flopped, you know? Mm -hmm. So paint them together, right? But you can see how this eye, these like arrow marks can help to do like three quarter and then all of a sudden different marks for, you know, a front view. It's not really about the arrows, people. It's about simplifying what you see, creating a shape language for yourself because our educational system, I can guarantee 99% of you probably failed us artistically because they didn't teach us the alphabet, the language of sketching, which means that we just try to write down stuff and then try to make sense of it later. We didn't actually get taught the alphabet for art. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know. Accurate statement, <laughs> very <right>? accurate. <laughs> How so, to think before you paint yes and so that's mm -hmm. what i constantly am teaching is like okay here is a sketch language that you can use now you're not gonna be painting like me this is more like i want to teach you the alphabet 
I want to teach you the alphabet so you can write your own words and your own stories. Isn't that kind of cool? Yeah, I love that. <laughs> amazing. That is amazing. <laughs> it's a great method of teaching, I think. Like, it's not about like imitating the person teaching you. It's about, like you say, learning a language and then using that language to create your own like, I guess, you know, you, you think of it as like visual poetry. That's that's kind of what we're doing. I, I think mm -hmm. about it like, uh, well, the sketching part of it is very much like you're writing notes frantically of everything that you want your book to be, right? Uh, the book is the final painting, writing notes is your sketching, right? And, and now if you know a language, if you know one language, which we're not really taught, um, then you can write frantically. Otherwise, you're just scribbling down random symbols that you will not be able to distinguish, you know, later on. Um, let me see if I have something else to show you too. Cause I was, I've been working on a, another course all about sketching that should come out in the next couple months, I think. But I was doing this one where it was like super interesting because um, I never see my own stuff this way as well. Let me see if I could find it, darn it. But uh, in the meantime, does anybody else have any questions or anything? Um, I actually have one if I'm not speaking like out of line. Sure. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I'm wondering what conveys expression in terms of like where you cut the iris and the pupil and how you continue to convey that with the eyebrows. Can you say that again? So I have trouble with conveying expression in my characters and like for a frown or like joy. I know they say to like the where the line like curves up or down will convey um like joy or sadness but a lot of it i see is conveyed in uh, terms of where you cut the iris for the pupil ah uh, uh so i kind of feel like you're gonna work yourself into bad habits that way it generally like i like to look at actors <clears throat> i like to look at people um, especially on YouTube, that's as real as it gets half the time, like these, uh, you know, unexpected videos and stuff, you get real reactions. And if you notice, like I was, I was watching this YouTube video where this guy was driving a convertible and then all of a sudden the roof of his convertible flies right off, flies right off and into traffic behind him, right? What's his emotion? Shock. What was his expression? It was almost nothing. Because he was so in shock. And where somebody else might be like, oh my God, and just going crazy, and that's shock. You know? Mm -hmm. um, I have certain relatives that I know where it's like, when they're really pissed, they smile at you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, okay, okay, wait until we get home, I'm smiling right now, you know, oh my God, and it's almost like this sadistic smile, like, and that's their pissed off expression, right? So like, if we kind of come up with these formulaic things where it's like, this is sadness, this is happiness, this is whatever, you're gonna get into some really bad habits very quickly, I think. That's that's how I kind of view that. Thank you very much. Um, so you're basically saying just look for videos and then draw the people reacting in yeah, terms or, of understanding it better internally. Yeah, or in the mirror. That's always great too, doing your expressions in the mirror. Like, look at this face. Look how many subtleties are in his expression there, right? What's the thing that I was really trying to get here? Those eyes. 
Right? Nothing's extreme about those eyes. The, the brows are not furrow, furrowing as much as they can or something like that. Yet he is the most sorry he's ever been in his entire life, probably. Right? It's awesome. Really appreciate that. Thank you. My pleasure. And now I got my funny version. <laughs> yeah, ob observation is definitely key because there isn't one thing that is going to express a certain type of emotion. For sure. And that's some, that's, sometimes that's the funniest thing about somebody's reaction, right? It's like how they expressed it or whatever. Mm -hmm. Or the thing that you really, really feel. Yeah. yeah. And it's like different personalities have different ways of expressing a specific type of emotion. Mm hmm Yeah, which also is kind of interesting because it's like you want to get really, really good at painting people. It's almost like at some point you need to get into psychology. Right? Mm. You need to start to understand mm -hmm. human behavior because it's so complex sometimes. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, even like the smallest twitch in your eye can like express something completely different. Yeah. Yeah. You got to start acting. Well, here's the <laughs> other thing. Sometimes it's layers. Some of the my most favorite actors or whatever, it's like those characters have so many layers to it. It's acting. That person is acting like they, like it's not affecting them. But their whole world just crashed down around them. But there's, they got to take care of this little girl that's, that's now in their care. You know, and, you know, like all these layers. So how does somebody show mm. that they're trying to hide the fact that they are scared shitless and they're trying to show that they're trying to be very brave at the same time? Like, oh, my gosh, you know, it's so cool. Mm -hmm. You could tell I geek out about this kind of stuff, right? Um, I, I want to... Like that's the best kind of stuff. Yeah, we need to do more about this. Nice. Um, yeah, anything else? I'm going to also bring up... Actually... A... Yeah. yeah? Sorry, there was another question was back to the acting. Do you or not or act, not even acting like what you were referring to, like geeking out about like the psychology of people do you have any um references to read up about this more um where besides actually looking at a film and then analyzing the scene and analyzing the character but anything that also like kind of helps you break down body language that you've used as a reference or anyone actually <laughs> oh i don't know i don't know where i i'm trying to think of a good book or something but i've definitely like like that's a subject that's very interesting to me especially um, animal body language and stuff so i've definitely absorbed a lot of it but i can't think of any specific book um there's a lot of if YouTube you stuff. speak portuguese yeah there's this one channel in brazil of a psychiatrist he analyzes scenes or YouTube videos and speaks about the body language and what it means. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I don't. I Why don't, don't really... I speak Portuguese? <laughs> but okay, so I I forget exactly why this was on my radar. Uh, I guess we were talking about sketch language. I think that was the thing. Oh shoot, we were talking about. Oh, shoot. Never mind. I thought I had a video. I could show you the raw file. It's kind of interesting anyways. But it's it's essentially comparing like um, a one minute pose to a two minute pose to a five minute pose of the same subject. And I was I was doing I was creating this lesson over the weekend for this course in the future about like switching gears of thinking and 
and also getting stuff down very quickly and and sketch language so let me see here um i kind of feel like it's probably this one But as this <laughs> file starts to open, if you have any other questions, you know, feel free to just jump in. <laughs> I have a um, question. Oh, oh sorry. No, no worries. I, I just want to quickly say, um, I remember watching a uh, YouTube video of like an FBI agent explaining how to read lo uh, body language. So, oh, I remember uh, that one. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a, like, I think that's also like a neat way to study and learn like those subtleties there, um, there's a sorry oh sorry sorry <laughs> i want to also mention a guy i don't remember his name now god this is so bad i would tell you the name but there is the guy on youtube who does like videos on how to be more charismatic and stuff and he shows different actors and their behavior and you can see like their expressions like i don't know chris pratt's expressions or like very popular people's expressions and what they do in order to be more charismatic so like the behavior, the language, the body language, and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Oh yes, his name is Charisma on Command. Yes, yes, yes. I've seen oh, this yeah, channel. Yeah. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I Charisma. Love that. Oh yeah. Charisma well, what? I had a question. On demand. Uh, Charisma on, oh. on demand. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> There's also another channel called Observe of a body language analyst. Oh, neat. Yeah, there are also the, the channels who, like, do body language of, like, killers and stuff like that. Like, yeah. serial killers. Mm -hmm. These are also pretty cool because if you, yeah. like, if you look at the, the the psychopaths and all, they, like, they don't have any emotions, most of them. Like, or if they have the emotions, if they pretend that they have any emotions to feel anything, it looks very fake. Uh. And that's also pretty cool. Yeah, like, like they're, the they're trying to react the, how they think they should be reacting, not not natural not it isn't a natural yeah, yeah. reaction i see they're trying to like mm -hmm. and you can really see that yeah mm. <laughs> yeah but i had a question is it all right if i ask a question go for it yeah so you always mention how well i always actually thought about that as well but you mentioned always mentioned that it's better to not having any teacher than having a teacher which doesn't teach you anything and teach you the wrong thing and actually i have that teacher right now that can't teach me anything like uh, I'm doing a game course, uh, and it's basically, well, it's like an actual school. It's not like just an online course. It's, it's an actual school course. And uh, once when we were doing, uh, we were creating our games, we were trying to figure out how to make our game, uh, our teacher basically thought, told us to, oh yeah, just go on the internet and look at different people, how they make games because I can't teach you how to make games because diff all of different games are different. And I was like, I know that different games are different. You know, you have different genres and all that different styles and stuff, but there are still some basics that you can teach us. He told us that he will teach us some basic programming uh, in C uh, major, is it? Major or minor? I always forget. But, uh, and he didn't tell us anything, a single thing. And I was so stuck. I was like, oh no. And I just gave up. I was like, there is no point. Yeah, that's not going to learn fair. anything on the internet. That's not cool. That was very unfair. That yeah, was my, horrible. Yeah, yeah. My thoughts with in instructors, like teachers or whatever, uh, ideally those would, would be the people that we try to prop up the most because those are the most, some of the most important professions. It's the people that are going to teach the future people, right? But, um, but we don't do that. And so sometimes we get people that couldn't do that need security and they get a job uh, teaching but then they're teaching things that they don't know and therefore they might kind of put on a bit of a show I'm not saying that that's what your person does but there are people that do that where they kind of put on a show where it's like I want to make sure that you feel like I know what I'm talking about yet I don't know what I'm talking about Right. And that's a dangerous thing. 
when you start telling people this is how it is this is how you should do things and you really don't know and you never did it before you never made a movie you never you know worked in whatever kind of projects situations yet you're teaching that like that's why i'm like a bad teacher is worse than no teacher at all like a bad guide that tells you to go the wrong direction is worse than not having a guide at all yeah absolutely that guide tells you eat those mushrooms there those are good for you good for your belly and then water just starts coming out of your ears and eyes because it's poisonous you know it's like um make sure we should all be able to ask our authority and say can you show me like that you actually know this stuff you know in a nice way can i i'd love to see your portfolio can you show me some of your work and kind of break down how you went about doing it so i can learn from it you know like we should be able to do that and they should show us if they haven't painted anything or drew anything or did anything that they are teaching in the last 10 years, they shouldn't be a teacher because they have no heart, not just rusty skills, but they have no heart in what they're teaching. They might have heart in the act of teaching, but they have no heart in doing the thing that they're teaching, which is not a very good teacher in my books kind of funny because he actually does that like uh he showed me because we had uh, i live in england and we usually have after college uh, after high school we have like uh college so it, college is a bit different than the college in america or something because the american college just like university we have college and then university i know that that's how it's in canada apparently uh basically we have college and then we have two years of college and then we have university and after high school, we, well, during the last year of high school, we get like interviews and stuff with different schools. And we have, we have, we have a, the opportunity to meet the teachers. Uh, and he was showing me his portfolio and all that. He was like, oh yeah, I was doing that, that and that. And it was all really, it was actually pretty impressive. Uh, and I was like, oh great. And he told me how he will teach us and all that. And I was like, wow, he also took, I was, so the, the thing that's, well, the, 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 the biggest reason why I went there on the course was because he said that we will do a lot of concept art and I'm into concept art so I was like wow okay that's really exciting and what happened well none of the people in our class I'm not trying to bully them or anything they have no knowledge on anything on games on 3d on animation there is one guy who knows how to make games which is actually pretty impressive and then there is me who draws and who does digital painting and stuff but no one else does it so when we did concept art twice it was just people messing around me which was pretty like you know I couldn't concentrate and not really doing concept art because mm. no one could do it he, also his teaching was pretty rubbish knowing the fact that other people couldn't do it they they never done concept art before they never done any sort of art before he had to teach us some basics anatomy basics and stuff and i was like oh god just stop it because it was so horrible even though i don't have the best knowledge of like anatomy and stuff because i'm still re learning it yeah. I, I knew that i i know i know more than he does and it was really really upsetting i was like do it like it was so upsetting ah oh, it's horrible i won't quit the course i have to waste my two years right now two years i try to change it onto art but it's impossible now, so yeah. I'm just I just gave up kind of and I'm just doing my own thing in the background. Good thing we have schoolism. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually planning on buying the subscription right now. So there you go. Well, um yeah, I feel for you. I feel for you. The other thing is <laughs> I don't know if I really see an end to, to that, that kind of situation happening because, you know, it's like we don't really value teachers as much as we should in society. So, you know, would you rather 
teach the amazing things that it took you super long to learn or would you rather work on star wars or something like that right and it's like well generally people are going to want to work on that pixar movie or whatever instead of teaching um in college where they might not appreciate um might not appreciate it as much so mm. it's a little tricky but it, here's the thing that i feel has saved me from the long way about doing things a lot of times because I've gotten bad advice too and I've gotten it from instructors as well it's whatever the person is saying whatever I'm saying as well this applies to me it applies to you know, everybody if it doesn't make sense to you you don't have to fully accept it keep delving in keep trying to understand right and if you truly understand, then, then you should absolutely accept it and do it. Because if not, if you understand it's a good thing for you and you, it's part of your journey and these are the things that you need to do to get to that destination, you got to do it. Otherwise, you're doing a disservice to yourself. But as well, the flip side of things, if you're told to do something and you don't understand, why am I doing this? For me, I've always been in the habit of questioning and going, I just, I don't understand yet. We don't have to say it in a mean way, but I don't understand yet. I don't know why I'm going to do this. And therefore, it's hard for me to do it because I don't see why. Right? And if you're listening to something and the person's being really adamant, really confident and saying all this stuff and, and you do not agree with it, it doesn't make sense to you, don't do it. Same thing, everything that I'm saying, if it doesn't make sense to you, if you're like, whatever, don't do it just because, you know, just because of whatever reason you might think. Yeah. Keeps us all very honest, I, I think, right? <laughs> when we go forward. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But it's kind of relative because... Let's see. When I was younger, I hated perspective. It made me frustrated and it made me scared. So I ran away from it. And now that I'm older, I was like, wait. So if I understand how boxes work, I understand how values or uh, volumes work. And if I understand how volumes work, my faces are not going to look like pancakes. What? Yeah. But the thing that I'm catching on to with this is like, it seemed like you were you know, we were scared or we were hesitating to pursue that. Not because it didn't make sense to us, but because of other reasons, which happens to all of us, right? We all know we need to exercise mm -hmm. and stuff, yet we don't half the time, right? And same reason. It's like, so I'm saying if it makes sense to you, it's like we have to do it. That's the other part to this kind of rule things that don't make sense to you you shouldn't need to do them but if it does make sense to you you should definitely do them yeah, yeah. so if like paying a quarter million dollars for four years of education you know um makes sense to you and it's a good investment for your future then do it pay $50,000 a year of education and do it because you know what there Craig Mullins went to art center you know like uh Victoria Ying went to art center that's a very expensive school and they're doing very well but is that a good investment for you right mm -hmm. and schoolism instead of a quarter million dollars say you take off three of those zeros off of that quarter million dollars you could buy a schoolism subscription right now for a year and still have 50 bucks for a gorgeous amazing gorging kind of like dinner <laughs> <laughs> whatever yeah so anyhow um i definitely you know, agree with you oh, on that sorry oh uh, sorry um I just want to say I also had a very terrible art school experience and I can walk out of my art school experience. I paid a lot of money, five years of my life. I can 
easily say there's a lot that I didn't learn. And everything that I have learned was, which I can attribute is to schoolism, um, that month, not month, that year subscription of schoolism. And I learned so much content in a year, more than I did in five years of studying, because I had that same experience of being with teachers who were teaching because of not their passion, you know, they're just doing. So that is, for my experience, I, I agree with that. That's also an experience I agree with. Um, yeah. Yeah, I do want to say, like, um, I, for the most part, I feel like I had some really great teachers. I had some really, really great teachers. Um, not all of them, of course, but there is one in particular I want to kind of mention. Uh, this person really taught me how to teach, not just how to draw and stuff. Uh, his name is Werner, Werner Zimmerman. He teaches at Seneca College now. Um, he was my teacher back in Sheridan College, and he taught life drawing, which later on I taught life drawing for the graduating year of Sheridan College. So obviously I'm very into life drawing. And during when I was a student, I wanted nothing more but to have my drawing on the wall, you know, in the hallway, because that's kind of like the Hall of Fame, uh, you know, in our little student bubble. And so I worked very, very hard. I actually skipped my own classes to attend more of his life drawing classes that I wasn't in, you know, and just kept doing it and um, tried all year and I couldn't get a drawing on the wall. I really did try 100%. And so at the end of the year, I go into my teacher's uh, office, into Werner Zimmerman's office, and I ask him if I could have a meeting with them to review my portfolio and review, you know, how I did. And he was like, sure, I show him my drawings. And before I show him my drawings, I'm just like, you know, Werner, I'm actually, I'm really puzzled. I'm very disappointed. I, I really tried my absolute hardest in your class just to try to get on that wall. And I never got on. And he was like, oh, okay, well, let me, let me look through your stuff. And he starts looking at my drawings and he's like, oh, this is a good one. I could totally see this one on the wall. And he looks at another one and he's like, oh yeah, this is a good one too. I remember this one. This one is totally wall worthy, you know? And he started looking at a few more and he's like, yeah, this one's good too. This one's good too. And he's like, I remember why I didn't put you on the wall. It's because I didn't think that you would try as hard if I put you on the wall. And then he gave me my portfolio back. And I was just Evil. like, wow, he is awesome. Cause I did try so hard all year. And if I did get on that wall, I wouldn't have improved nearly as much. And he knew that and he, he taught me, don't treat everybody, don't teach everybody the same. Try to get to know them and teach them uh, according to their strengths and weaknesses. He didn't say that to me, but that's what I learned from him. Mm. That's awesome. That's cute. How to like push your buttons in the right way, like yeah. how to push it. Is. I think that was evil. <laughs> in a good way, a good evil. <laughs> I think it was cute because it complimented you more when he was like, oh, yeah, I didn't put it be because I thought, you know, he won't improve as much. But, you know, he just said that you improved a lot more. So that's complimenting. I would find it as a compliment. It would be that's so nice. <laughs> that's just cool. Yeah, my artwork was put on a wall in a different school and it got lost. They didn't care about it. Just put it on the oh, wall, oh, no. left it there. All of my school portfolio, apart from one, um, one sketchbook, was the, which was the first sketchbook I did on the course, and it wasn't as completed because I had no clue what we were doing at the beginning. But then the teacher explained it to me. She was actually a very good teacher, but she decided to give it to different school because they said that it was like this particular particular grade work that's horrible that's horrible <laughs> so we sent it to different schools to show it to people uh, and i was okay. asking other teachers because she went she, she uh she had the mater maternity leave because she had she had a baby and i was asking the other teachers who were 
oh. art, art related in the school. And they were like, oh, yeah, no, no, we will call the school. It's fine. I was asking them every week, like literally every week or every two weeks. Oh, well, I, I hope you got it back. Every time. But also, I no, want yeah. to, you know. No, 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 I won't get it. Oh, something it. that um something that I've heard from Glenn Keane himself. You know, he said that he never applied for animation at CalArts. He applied for illustration and they mixed up his portfolio and put it into animation. So, you know, oh, <laughs> it's I like know. So kind he of just fun. accepted that? Like he didn't try to pull up a fight and go back to illustration? I don't remember the full story, but I know that is true. And then he ended up going into animation. Lucky him. What would have happened if he didn't have him as an animator? That's right? crazy. Yeah. It's now, a happy accident. Yeah. The other thing I, I'd love to mention here, um, because we were talking about expressions before. This was probably my favorite part of the whole painting. It's this, it's this part right here where I, I do, I'm going to go do it right now. Paint that redness, you know, like dude has gone through some emotions, you know, biting his lip, bunch of snot. I don't know what it is, but that redness just on that upper lip area, just above the upper lip area really kind of sold that sorriness to me. Like, dude has been going through a lot emotionally. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, I just wanted to kind of mention it's that. That was really fun to paint. It's just emotion taking him over. And I love that little tear. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, at first, I was like, where am I going to put this tear? I, I feel like it definitely yeah. needs some water or whatever. All right, so I put a little bit of shadow. I'm looking at it, trying to imagine the tear. Okay, I want to put it there. Right? I put the shadow of the tear first, and then I put the tear. And then I thought about wow. it. I was like, uh, should it be over, you know, should it be over here? Where should it be? So I'm moving around. <laughs> Different eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> it's, that's cool. It's like seeing that part, you know, experimenting, figure yeah. out like what conveys the message the best way. It's like it definitely would have been very different if he had a whole stream of tears like yeah. across his face or like, on his face because this is more like, you know, he's been holding it for so long and that little tear just, you know. And the comedic side of me was like ready to do a whole bunch of snot coming out of his mouth, dribbling into his mouth, or like out of his nose into his mouth, and like all sorts of stuff. But um, I was trying to find the right amount of funniness versus seriousness. Mm. It's like a good balance, I would say. Yeah. Um, here's something else I want to mention. So today we're doing the stream. Tomorrow, we have an interview with Michael Yuwandi. So that's going to be awesome. awesome. Michael Yuwandi, he worked on many, many uh, movies, shows, Supergirl, uh, um, Star Trek, who knows what else. He's currently at Marvel. Then on Wednesday, uh, so we're going to have an interview with Michael tomorrow. And then Wednesday is going to be bright, bright, awkward. Uh, great. That's awesome. Yeah. And, uh, you know, joining us in the chat after the interview, I believe. Um, Bright's incredible. And then we're going to have a 90 minute art challenge with Wendy Tan. So that's going to be really, really fun. Uh, she loves painting her dog, so we paint the dog, or a dog. And then Friday, last but not least, for this week, Shelly Wang. Oh, this amazing. interview, I've been trying to get for years, by the way. I've been trying to get an interview with Shelly for years. She 
um, worked on Coco. She worked on, uh, I think, Finding Dory, I believe, Monsters University. Uh, but she also was production designer for Wish Dragon that's coming out next mm -hmm. or on the 15th. Uh, I think in China. It might be only in China first. But it's, um, it's an incredible movie. And the artwork is phenomenal. Phenomenal. It's like the first, uh, well, not the first, but one of the very, very few films that I've seen that's computer animated, that's foreign, that looks just as good as Hollywood. So that's mm -hmm. going to be awesome too. Um, check out all of those things this week. And before you forget, definitely remember to subscribe to this channel so you can find your way back easier. And we have like, we kind of went over the amount of time here. Um, last little bits that I did to this painting was I blurred out the, the father, the foreground, right? Fuzzed it out a little bit, really concentrating on the sun. Any last question? I, maybe one last question and we'll call it a day. I do. Yeah. I don't have a question. Uh, um, it's just a quick question. Have you ever done a an interview with I, I, Aaron Blaze, the guy who do, he did uh, work for Disney? Yes. Uh, and um, I, I'm not sure if I interviewed him or not. I, I'm not Proca sure. Did. Like, I know that Proca did. Okay. Well, he's awesome. I consider him a friend. He's awesome. And I, yeah, I would love to do something with him. Um, I'm not sure if I already did, though. I'll have to double check. Check myself. It's fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool. Well, this has been great. Uh, thank you so much to everybody that tuned in, everybody on YouTube and Facebook, all the mods in Discord, all the people in Discord, my co-host, Masay, thank you so much. Yeah. And uh, Jamie, thank you to Jamie in the chat as well. Always helping out. Um, get on the Schoolism Winter Sale. It's almost done. All right. Take care, everybody. Hi. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Yeah, it's the last week, I believe. It's the last week for the winter sale. Yeah. All right. Take care. Thank you, Bobby. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you. Bye. Bye.